The new White House Office of American Innovation is the Trump administration's effort to streamline government and boost services to citizens. But the White House hasn't indicated yet how the new effort will coordinate with the innovation cells the government already has. Phaedra Crusos is chief innovation officer at the Libra Group. Phaedra, thanks for coming on the program. What was your takeaway from the announcement of OAI? I was very pleased with the announcement. The idea of bringing private sector best practices to government is the reason why we recruited so many people from the metaphysical Silicon Valley into the government. It's the reason why I was in the government. And I see this as a doubling down of our work and a validation of our efforts and all the good work that's been done. What do you think will be the determining factor about whether this effort succeeds or fails, and how do you measure the success or failure of an organization like this? I think taking the lessons learned from version 1.0 for what we did is incredibly important. So I, I know that he mentioned that the press release mentioned working with career and civil service. I think that's hugely important. We learned that very early on that you need to partner with people that know the inside and know how to navigate the government's obstacle course to get things done. I think he all, the press release also mentions working with internal groups like 18F and USDS and all the innovation labs across government, and I think that's also hugely important. The uh, press release actually said the recommendations that the OAI releases will be developed in collaboration with career staff along with private sector and other external thought leaders. They mentioned career staff right. before they mentioned everybody else. That might be a first for this kind of effort in government. And I think that's exactly what we need to do. Innovation is not some magical thing you dream up of. It's when, it's when you work together with people on the inside to actually empower them to get their ideas out into the open and then use those ideas to move forward. That connection between the private sector folks that are coming in and the career staff right. has received some criticism in the efforts that not just the Obama administration but other administrations have tried. What in your experience did you learn about trying to make those connections that would help the Trump team? I think embedded teams really is a, is a big help. Um, we embedded a team at Treasury, for example, to work on the Data Act. That went hugely successfully. Um, we had a team at the FEC. So I think that really getting, um, getting into the agencies, into the depths of the CIO offices and working with people on the ground is probably the best way to both understand what's happening and also really work hand in hand with them. So given your ideas about the importance of maintaining 18F, DIUX, right. USDS, what do you think this looks like as a successful framework to oversee those organizations and to make sure that those organizations aren't off doing their own thing, renegade style, but are working within the bounds of what OAI wants to accomplish? Well, I think what OAI offers is both air cover, which I think is a very welcome to disruptive organizations like 18F and USDS and others, but it also offers coordination. Some of our best efforts were coordinated through the Office of the CTO, like the Data Driven Justice Initiative, and uh, the Office of the Federal CIO, like login.gov. So if we can do that and replicate that over and over again through this one single point of contact, then I think we're, we're, in a good, we're in good shape. One potential problem, though, is that both of the jobs that you mentioned, not only do we have people doing those jobs right now, mm -hmm. we don't even have nominees for people to potentially do those jobs. What does that do? How does that impact the potential to execute something like this? Is this kind of on hold until those people come in to office? Or are there things that this office or the agencies that are working with this office can do already to get started? Well, I think this office will take the place of those in terms of the role that they play in coordination and air cover. And I think that's very important. I mean, the more senior the air cover and coordination is at the White House, the better off we are. So having a senior advisor in the White House be responsible for this is is key to the success of all of these individual individual units. You've used that term air cover a couple of times. Yeah. Who's covering who from what in an organization like this? I think anytime you try and do something different in a risk averse government, not this gov administration in particular, but just in general, having someone from the top saying it's okay to try new things and experiment is really important. And I think without that, disruptive efforts wane and you know become weaker over time. Is, are, is, are they covering people from other people inside the agencies that are trying to make changes? Are they covering people from Congress? Are they covering oh. people from other parts of the administration? What does that look like? Oh, I see what you mean. I think they're just covering people to get their jobs done in an everyday notion. I don't think it's about hiding anything or about misleading anybody. I think it's just about giving people the wiggle room and the breathing room to try new things. And the importance then of somebody in a leadership role saying, it's okay, we continue to endorse this. Exactly. We continue to think this is a priority. 
six months from now, a year from now, two years from yeah. now. Am I, is, am yeah, I absolutely. Right and that's the kind of that's the kind of environment that you need for gov for civil servants, like mentioned in the press release, to come up and give their ideas out into the open. It's also the kind of ecosystem you need for private sector folks to come in and be able to feel free to give new ideas. So in that one year, two year, or mm -hmm. some point in the future time frame, how do you look back on something like this, if it is still a priority, right. and say, we've accomplished what we've wanted to, or here's how we need to redirect, or whatever. Are there metrics that you can use to measure innovation, which could be an amorphous term if you wanted it to be? That's a great question. I think it's very hard to measure innovation. It's very hard. In an ideal world, you'd work in the open, and you document all of the impact, whether it's on the customer experience or whether it's on cost savings to the government. But we learned with TTS that uh, security gets, often gets in the way of working in the open, and small people politics get in the way, gets in the way of talking about impact. So if I had to give advice here, I'd say find two or three signature initiatives that really embody all the things that you want this office to embody that resonate with the American public and use those as a way to explain what you do. And you uh, anticipated my final question, <laughs> which is uh, this press release says uh, modernizing government yeah. services and information technology, improving services to veterans, creating transformational infrastructure projects. They list two or three others, right. but it appears there's a focus and you think that's a good thing. I think it's a great thing. I think especially the focus on the VA, which so many people can relate to and is in such need of innovation. I think this is a great place to start and be able to show the impact on the veteran at the end of the day. Phaedra Crusoe, thanks as always. Thank you for having me.